<laughs> Look, you don't wear diapers anymore, do you? <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. What is the point? The point is that I didn't get what Paul was trying. I did not recognize the assignment. I didn't recognize the hand of God. I was a slave. I was at the bottom. And, and I assumed incorrectly that the hand of God had nothing to do with getting me here. No, no, no. I'm just struggling with a random set of, of meaningless events that God wants me to conquer. The day I got a revelation of God, of his purpose. It's like, wow, wait a minute. God, you're here? Not only are you here, I, I, would have, I would, could have told you he was here. But I didn't think he had anything to do with some of these trials or these struggles. Was nothing. He had nothing to do with that. That was just my mistakes and my, you know, my shortcomings. The day I saw that, everything changed. I want, to, want us to look at a quick, uh, at a Bible character. I think you can see this principle literally in every Bible character. Let's just look at one. Here's David. Fifteen years David spends on the run from a wicked king who wants to kill him. Now, it's not just that a man wants to kill him. This man is well-financed and he has an army. That'll keep you running. That will keep you on your toes. That, that is a recipe for, for stress right there. Okay, it's one thing to have somebody who doesn't like you. That might be a little bit stressful in your life. But this man on the like doesn't like you. He wants to kill you and he has an army. And he's the king. He's in charge. It's legal. All right? So again and again in the Psalms, David will say such things as this. The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. When you're in a spot like that, what is normal for a person without faith? What's normal? Anxiety, depression, fear, just absolute discouragement, complete and total. But David goes on and he gets around to this in every one of his psalms. He gets around to something like this. Verse 31, same psalm, Psalm 18. For who is God except the Lord? What David is saying, if you could read that whole psalm, put it into context... He sees God. He sees beyond the hand of Saul, and he sees, God, you have a purpose. Maybe, they don't under, maybe I don't understand perfectly exactly what it is, what you're doing, but you're God. And if Saul is, is, is after me, if Saul is, is, is able to get through and get after me, then it's come through you. See, the, Paul later in, in the Corinthians here, we'll be reading it, I think, this week. Paul says that, that there's... God is faithful and he will not allow you to be tempted or tested beyond what you're able. If there's a test or temptation that has come your way, it has gone through a filter. And God says you're able. They are able. And this has a redemptive purpose. It doesn't mean that everybody gets redeemed through it, but it has a redemptive purpose. Well, David saw that. He says, who is God except the Lord? God, you're God. You're God. And if this, getting, if this is getting through my life, it has come through your filter, and I'm going to rejoice in it. Who is God except the Lord? Who is a rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. Now, just like in 1 Corinthians, the word slave and calling, many don't think can fit in the same sentence or in the same person. This is maybe even a little bit tougher to, to, to think of. How in the same life, at the same time, can the cords of death entangling me and my way being perfect be the same. I'm in a cave running from a killer. How can that be perfect? Well, David got it. You know how it can be perfect? It can be part of your assignment. It can be part of your calling. It can be a revelation that God is doing something. I've said this six times. I'm going to say it again. Your life will spin on a dime. The day you start looking beyond the trouble, beyond the person, beyond the thing, beyond the financial difficulty, and see God. And start, start dealing with Him. By the way, if you ever notice this from Genesis to Revelation, God tells us that we should fear Him alone. The day you start seeing straight and start seeing the hand of God, if you see straight, you'll fear Him alone because you'll recognize it's, it's Him and me. It's Him and me. If I've got troubles, it's with him, and I can, I can get these things straight. Now, I'm not suggesting that he is the one who, who, there is, there is a real devil who wants to attack you. But if he's gotten through, he's come through a filter, and God has a redemptive purpose that God wants to produce something in you. And when you know that purpose, life ceases to be this random set of meaningless events, and you're going to get what David got. It is God who arms me with strength. I can testify that that day in my life, everything changed. 
I went from discouraged and whipped, and I, I don't know if I was depressed, but I was pretty close, to the point where I couldn't even you know, enjoy my new baby son, to being armed with strength. Armed with strength. I went to the same, you know, the, the, that next week, after getting this revelation that the hand of God had me right where he wanted me, and he had a purpose in these struggles, that next week was so bizarrely different. It's like two different lives. It's like two different people. That next week, as I recognized, God has a purpose. I didn't even understand exactly what all the purpose was. I just knew he had a purpose. And all of a sudden, for one, I started enjoying my life bizarrely more. Let me walk you through this a little bit. I'll tell you some of the changes. Before that time, now, I would have said that I actually prayed a lot more. I don't know if I prayed more, but I, I guess I'll, I'll say I prayed more. But actually what I was doing was more worrying out loud. I was more praying, God, fix this, fix this, fix this. God, help. God, fix this, fix that. God, help. The day I started getting a revelation that the hand of God was in my life and there was a purpose in where I was at, I kept praying. But all the stress and striving was gone from my prayers. And it became much more, I, again, I don't have time to explain everything I would have prayed. Obviously, I continued to pray for God to be involved in things and God to fix things. But it was a completely different tenor in that prayer. But the, the base of my prayer became, God, thank you. That became the foundation of my prayer life right there. God, thank you. When you see God in your life and you get a revelation of of how awesome he is and his involvement in your life, you will start thanking him. That's what the Bible says, to give thanks in all things. Thank you, God. Thank you for your hand. Thank you for what you're doing in my life. Thank you. Are you tempted to say, but Pastor Brian, I lost my job. Thank God. God, what are you doing? Thank God you're working things out. You've got a purpose. You've got a plan. Hallelujah. It's going to be awesome to see how you work this out, God. Tell you, you get a revelation of the hand of God and his involvement in your life and the things that before would have absolutely put you in a pit of depression, you'll be rejoicing. You'll be rejoicing, saying, God, this is awesome. I'm, I get to watch you work. And you know what? From that day, internally things changed immediately from discouragement to joy to strength. But then externally, the things that I had been so troubled about, the things that I desperately kept trying to get God to fix. I mean, I would confess all the right things and pray all the right prayers and, you know, you say the right thing and you pray the right thing and you do the right thing, but I just couldn't seem to get God to fix it. The day I got a revelation of God's hand and his purpose, externally, things started to change. It was only a matter of months until this church building was just given to us, just until people just started showing up. I didn't change. I, I wasn't better. wasn't a better preacher. Gordy wasn't singing any better. I wasn't preaching any better. We, we were just us. But God started showing up in greater ways, and greater things started happening. And I am absolutely convinced that a huge part of it was just getting the revelation that God has a purpose, seeing his hand, embrace him, rejoice in him right where I'm at. If you can't rejoice in him where you're at, you're tying his hands to lift you up. He wants to bless. But what happens if he blesses you while you're still fighting and fussing and kicking and trying to fight your way to the top? What happens when you get blessed in that situation? Well, you get the wrong interpretation in your head and you get blessed and you come out saying, <laughs> yeah, I know how to do it. I can fight my way to the top. You know, these other turkeys, they just don't know. They're just, they're too weak but I know how to get to the top. Now you see the hand of God and start recognizing his hand. You start praising him and he'll watch him bless you. Since that time, I have seen God. But my, my whole prayer life, my life is so much different. The, the truth is I worked a lot harder, at least internally. I worked a lot harder before that time. Strived a lot more to get the church to, to grow. Since that time, I mean, don't, please don't misunderstand. I, I'm not suggesting. Well, since that time, I've just sat by the pool and no, of course not. Obviously, we have a part. We have, a, we have to do our job, obviously. 
but it's been much more a stature of watching the hand of God, realizing God is at 